Our first speaker is uh, Noriyoshi Sukagawa from Tokyo University of Science. And Nori, thank you so much for giving this talk. I think it's uh, uh, not a <laughs> usual time for you. So we really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, nice kind introduction. And uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me this excellent opportunity. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Today, I'd like to talk about my recent results on the diameter of polyhedron. And mainly, uh, my talk is based on this paper, uh, which is co authored with Antoine Deza and Lionel Pony, which appeared in this journal. And in the title, I have two keywords uh, lattice pointer. Please forget to turn it off first. A lattice point of and the diameter of point ops. So I first explain what we mean by these two uh, terminologies. Uh, lattice point op is a convex point op whose vertices are all integral, as you may know. And applications, uh, there are many applications, including integer programming, combinatorics, and discrete geometry. Uh, here is a examples in dimension two and dimension three. And in this talk, uh, we focus on lattice point ops uh, contained in the hypercube, d dimension cube of Rang scale. And for example, zero one point ops, uh, the special case of this point of this lattice point of when k is one and half into a point ops, also a special case of this point of uh, for K2, where we need to match by the point of by two to make it a uh, lattice point of. Okay. And uh, here's the definition of the diameter. Uh, that the diameter of a point of P is defined to be the smallest integer L such that any two vertices of P can be connected by using at most L edges of P. So in other words, this, uh, this is the maximum distance of two parties in the graph of poly point of. And for example, for this point of, the diameter is six. For example, for this pair, the distance is three. But for this pair, the distance is six. So uh, we say that the diameter of this point of is six. And uh, one of the motivation for studying the diameter comes from its uh, close relationship with the worst case complexity of the simplex method. As you can see from this figure, uh, the diameter serves as a lower bound on the complexity of the simplex method. Suppose you have uh, a linear programming problem where this serves an optimal solution. And if we run simplex method with this vertex as an initial vertex, we see that the length of the simplex path cannot be shorter than the diameter path. So uh, it is a very really important question, how large the diameter can be. But uh, there are many open questions. And I hear a remark there's a new good result by the Pierre Mincini, which shows show, uh, the existence of short simplex passes in lattice point ops. Please check if you are interested in. And okay, I uh, show some small examples. Uh, diameter of lattice point ops in dimension two. two. <clears throat> and I use this notation, delta dk which denotes the largest possible diameter of the lattice point of contained in the uh, hypercube, the OKD in dimension D. But here I consider uh, in dimension two. Okay, here's the question. What is the behavior of delta two K? Okay, here's the examples. And delta two one is two, like this. And delta two two is three. Like this, and data two three is four. About data two four is four, like this. So, uh, 
In dimension two, the number of vertices equal to the number of edges. And the diameter is almost the half of the number of edges. Okay. So uh, please take the situation here. Is delta ni k 2k is linear in k or sublinear in k? And here's an uh, answer to the question. Uh, delta 2k is known to be sublinear in k. More formally, uh, when k goes to infinity, delta 2k is known to behave as like this, uh, constant times q a k to the power of two over three, when k goes to infinity. So uh, this means that these two consecutive values take the same value, I mean, does not increase with hyper with hyper probability when k is sufficiently large. So this is a direct consequence of these papers, which provided the uh, asymptotic behavior of the number of vertices of that is polymer. Because there's a nice relationship uh, between the number of vertices and the diameter in dimension two. And uh, the main of today's talk is to introduce uh, a kind of generalization of this result into high dimensions. <clears throat> and I would like to uh, explain previous results briefly. Uh, Please recall that delta dk denotes the largest possible diameter of a lattice point top contained in the hypercube of length scale, like this. And this is the most classical result by Nadef, who shows that the uh, zero one point of, I mean, when k is one, uh, the largest possible diameter is d. So in this table, here is k, uh, sorry, uh, here is k and here is d. And this result means that uh, these are uh, the exact values. And this upper bound uh, uh, later generalized by Klein Schmidt and Don, which shows that uh, KD for any K. But this upper bound is not tight even for this cell, 2, 2, 2, 2. Yeah? This upper bound says that for this cell, the upper, it is at the most 4, 2 times 2, but the value is 3 as I mentioned before. And the Pierre Mincini uh, defined this upper bound if uh, for k larger than or equal to two, and it shows that it is tight if k is two. So here is the exact value. And please uh, check this paper if you are interested in more uh, better upper bound for general upper bound. But I we should remark that even when k is three, the tight bound here is open. General bound is open, open question. And on the other hand, if uh, for fixed d, uh, when, when d is two, we know that the asymptotic uh, tight estimate here, as mentioned before. And also there are uh, enumeration algorithms which shows uh, some specific values for specified D and K. And also here is a lower bound. Uh, uh, for K, which is smaller than two times D, we know that this is a lower bound. And also uh, for, for fixed D, for fixed D, uh, it was shown it was mentioned in this paper that uh, d times k to the two over three serves a lower bound uh, asymptotically for any fixed d. This follows from uh, the exact result in dimension two. And uh, this was a question by Del Pierre Mincini, can we do better? And uh, our answer is yes. So uh, today's talk, uh, introduce this result. Okay, and here is the highlight of this paper. Our strategy is to focus on a special case of lattice point of uh, called primitive zonotope. This is 
this has been already used in Deza Manosaki's own paper. And please remember this relationship. If it is a primitive zonotope, it is a lattice zonotope. And if it is a lattice zonotope, then it is a lattice pointer. Please remember this relationship. And what we did in this paper is an establishment of the asymptotic diameter of a primitive zonotope, this one. But uh, we see that this asymptotic estimate coincides with that of lattice zonotope, this one, for any fixed D. And this is the main theorem. And also we see that this asymptotic estimate coincides with that of lattice polytope if these two, I mean in dimension two. And finally, it provides an improved lower band on that of lattice polytope when compared to the lower band mentioned in the Rupia Mijini paper. Okay, uh, first I'd like to uh, explain the definition of primitive zonotope. Uh, we call G a uh, lattice point, uh, integer point, G primitive if its GCD is one. GCD is a greater common divisor of the elements of G. Say one, two, four, it's uh, GCD is one, but uh, two, zero, four, it's GCD is two. Something like that. And let PD uh, be the set of primitive points. Then uh, a primitive zonotope, respectively lattice zonotope, is a Minkowski sum of line segments called the generators whose one end point is origin and whose other end point is some lattice uh, point. And if we uh, consider a primitive zonotope, we uh, impose that the GI must be included in PD, okay, primitive. But if it is lattice zonotope, general lattice zonotope, we it is okay G in ZD for each I. Okay, here is a figure showing how this primitive zonotope constructed. Uh, say this is G1, G2, and then the line segment will be like this, and its Minkowski sum will be like this. And if we add one more line segment here, then we obtain this uh, primitive zonotope. Like this, uh, we can construct a uh, uh, lattice zonotope. Okay, so a uh, primitive zonotope is a special case of lattice zonotope. Okay. And here's the main theorem. For any fixed D, if we let delta Z to DK denotes the largest possible diameter of a lattice zonotope, so Z stands for zonotope, contained in the hypercube d-dimensional cube of Rangus k, then we see that uh, delta z dk behaves as c of d times k to the power of d over d plus one. The constant c of d is uh, written like this, when k goes to infinity. And here, zeta denotes the Riemann zeta function, and we can prove that C of D converges to two times E, about 5.47 when D goes to infinity. And here's also, uh, here's a news, recent news, an explicit formula of this delta Z DK uh, is constructed in this paper. And Okay, now I would like to explain how good uh, this, this asymptotic behavior is. And let's, let's set D to two. I mean, consider the dimension in dimension two. In this case, delta Z to DK, uh, the, the, our estimate will be like this. And if we uh, calculate and where we uh, constitute, uh, substitute this data two, uh, is equal to pi squared over six as known as Basel problem. And we obtain this estimate. 
and please remember that uh, please recall that this is exactly the asymptotic type estimate of delta 2k when k goes to infinity so uh, if d is 2 and when k goes to infinity delta zeta dk roughly speaking is equal to delta dk i mean uh, roughly speaking uh, when we look, uh, when we discuss uh, asymptotic behavior of diameter, uh, uh, looking at the zonal tops is, is enough in dimension two. And, uh, but we are not sure the same thing holds for any fixed D larger than or equal to three. So this is an open problem. And also uh, I'd like to compare to the previous bound. Uh, it was mentioned in this paper that uh, delta dk uh, is bounded from below by this when k goes in infinity. And, uh, and uh, okay, so the delta z dk is a lower bound of the delta dk in general. Uh, our estimate implies that when k goes to infinity, delta dk is bounded from below by this here is our estimate and please compare this one and this one <clears throat> so when d is very large uh, this constant term is large when compared to this one because this converges to two times e a constant but here uh, the exponent is larger here so for fixed d uh, this lower bound is better when compared to the previous one and finally, I'd like to explain the strategy of the analysis. Okay. Uh, in fact, the number of generators is equal to the diameter for zonotopes, including primitive zonotope, if the generators are pairwise non-collinear. And our proposal is to look at this such set of lattice points. Okay. If we uh, define like this, we see that generators uh, obtained from this uh, set of primitive points are pairwise non-collinear from these two constraints. G must be in the set of primitive points and also the first non-zero element of G must be positive. And uh, defined like this, roughly speaking, the resulting uh, zonotope has large diameter but has small size uh, because we gather all the short line segments, this constraint. I mean, if I uh, use long segment, long segment, then the diameter, uh, sorry, uh, the zonotope will be get fat, like without, uh, but not not increasing diameter so we want to uh, gather many short line segments satisfying this constraint so uh, it is uh, so we look at this set okay and i show some examples e2p is really like this and please recall that g is primitive if g is the lattice point and not origin and GCD of G is one. And if P is one, this set consists of these two lattice, lattice points and it does not include zero minus one uh, from this constraint. And if it is included, we see that these two line segments will be collinear. And if P is two, this set uh, consists of these four uh, lattice points and uh, it does not include two zero. If this is included, these two line segments will be collinear. Okay, this is the definition, uh, uh, this is an example. And here is the image of D23 and uh, the resulting primitive zone top. These are uh, uh, line segments defined by D23 and this is a primitive zone top uh, obtained from this D23. And here's the strategy of the analysis. 
Let HDP denote the lattice zone top generated from GDP, and that delta DP denotes the diameter of HDP, I mean the size of this set, and kappa DP denotes the size of HDP, I mean the minimum K such that uh, this HDP contained in this box. And this, there are four steps. First, we provide asymptotic behavior of delta DP when P goes to infinity. And next, provides asymptotic behavior of kappa DP when P goes to infinity. Now, here is a very technical part. And in the third step, relate kappa DP and delta DP. This where we use an understand structure of GDP. And combine then by eliminating P, we obtain the asymptotic estimate. And I finally uh, uh, into, uh, explain this part. So uh, please recall that G is primitive if GCD of G is one and the P of D, PD denotes a set of printing points. And uh, it is known that the density of PD over the other lattice points is uh, the inverse of okay. we uh, sorry uh, I checked the chat uh, this one and furthermore for any complex body C uh, we have this formula okay where volume PC means uh, a volume of the duration of C by P okay and here is the image of primitive points in the plane. Okay, so density is about 0 0.6, 0 0.8. And so uh, since GDP is a set of primitive points, G such that uh, satisfying this uh, constraint and satisfying this constraint, so it will be like this. Okay. Uh, this constraint is shown like this, and this constraint shown like this. I mean, uh, first element, first non element must be positive. Okay. So uh, in this formula, it is sufficient to set the P C to the A one known ball of radius P, and if we so and only half, just half of them uh, contribute to this set. So we just have the result. Then we obtain a, a symptotic behavior of uh, this is here, okay? And I uh, assume that A1 norm, but uh, we can consider any uh, AQ norm by using a general formula based on Euler's gamma function about this uh, uh, volume of a convex body, AQ norm. Uh, that's all for my talk, and if I have time, uh, I will talk this later. <laughs>